welcome to the Manifest Angel tutorial. So these little angels, I designed these because they're something that's really simple and um, and again they're quite good for beginners so they can make a small project using different techniques but getting a great result at the end. So I originally designed these just because I like angels really and I did the little blue one and then I thought well I'll try a different colour and then I started to think about assigning um, meanings behind them so almost like a colour therapy. Okay let's look at the equipment that you'll need to make your own manifest angel. So I use my three needles. If you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know this, that I have my coarse, medium coarse and my fine needle. Coarse for starting and joining anything. So when I put the head on, that's what I'll be using. This one's for firming and shaping and the finest needle is for adding my colour and smoothing it out so you can't kind of see holes in your work at the end. So this one is the 36 green triangular, my starter and joiner. Then I have the 38 red triangular, which is the firming and shaping, and the 40 blue triangular for details and smoothing. They're my three go-to. I use those for absolutely everything. I don't use any. I don't use anything posh. I don't use anything flash. They are the three needles that I buy, and they're the ones that I stick to. Nothing else. Also, you'll need an awl, A W L. However. If you don't have one and you don't want to be spending the money, just get a finer knitting needle or something and use that or anything that's, you know, even your darning needle, that might take a bit of um, uh, jiggery pokery. But I guess if you use some jewellery pliers, you might be able to manage it with a darning needle because at the end, what we're going to be doing is putting your thread through the head and out of the top, which I'll show you at the time. So obviously you'll need your darning needle, pair of scissors, the template, as I've said, is on melaniswoolworkshop.co.uk for all the cards and templates that go with this design. Everything's absolutely free and you can sell them, gift them, do whatever you want with them. I'm not precious about this. I just want to teach people how to felt. That's my only um, end game in this. I use a pair of scales because all the projects I do are quite small and that's what you'll learn with me that all small projects, it might be worth investing in a pair of scales. I got these off Amazon, four pounds something, I think. Um, so it's for measuring kind of very small amounts. Um, so I do use my little scales. That's golden beads, I believe that's called that one. But they're not absolutely precise. Um, so if you saw the Very Hungry Caterpillar video and I weighed out eight little balls of wool for um, for his body, they were like a ground... Um, point zero point something out on each one because they're not massively precise but they give you that overall there or thereabouts about so don't get too hung up again on weights okay the thread that I use through the top this is something I just bought because I saw and I liked it so these are off Amazon so it's Oasis embroidery thread okay the reason I bought these is because they've got sparkles in them come on gorgeous you get tons and tons of color i can't remember how much they were i will link in the description at the end so i will link to the templates i will link to this i'll probably link to the scales as well and just do whatever i can just to help you out to find things um that you're looking for okay little pair of scissors is always handy too and that's the equipment you need let's have a look at the wool so let's have a look at the uh, the actual materials you'll need now so as I've said before, please don't go out and spend loads of money on core wool. It's not worth it. Everything that I've done and things that I display all have acrylic toy filling inside. You don't need to spend money on core wool. Just, just don't do it. So this in a huge bag, um, I'm sure I buy it off Amazon a couple of kilos or maybe a kilo for $9.99. It lasts me forever because I do small projects and I absolutely love this stuff. If you have an old cushion or something and you're not going to use it again, open it up. It'll have the same stuff inside and you can use that. Save you an absolute fortune. Now, I've got the cream for the angel's body. A lovely flesh colour for her face. I get my wools um, off Heidi Feathers, which is a lovely website. And that's where I get my flesh colour. Absolutely love this. Then the yellow for the halo, a really tiny amount. Okay, we'll do some flat work for that and for the wings as well. And a hair colour. I've been using this hair on all of them. Um, I will change it up, I think, go, 
you know, down the line, I'll probably run out of this and use something else. But you can use what you want for your hair colour because you could match it to the recipient, couldn't you? I'm going to be using green. Now, I love this one just because it's got other colours through it and I'm a little bit obsessed with that kind of look. It's beautiful. So I'm going to do the good luck manifest angel today. So that's why I'm going to use green for her. So they are the wool colours you will need. So let's get going. Let's make this thing. So let's measure out what we need first. So now this for my scales, when I first bought my scales, I just used to put the wool on there, but it weighed it really badly because obviously you've got kind of overhang and you're trying to ball it up and weigh it. So that's just from a corner yogurt, wash that out and that makes it so much easier to weigh. So we are going to need two grams for her body. So let's weigh out two grams. Get in there, too much. And I'll show you a little tip with these scales as well once we're done. So you can see that's 2.03, but if I remove the tiniest bit, it's gone down by like seven grams. So it can be a bit hit and miss. So 2.02, 2 I'm happy with that. But what I'll do, a way to check it as well, is just take it off and ball it, drop it back in, 2.03, you can just as I said, the temperamental, so keep taking it off, popping it on, 201, we're not going to get much closer than that. So that's for her body. Now for her head, we are going to be weighing out 1.31. So let's begin. So this is the body we're going to be starting on. Okay. My needle, as we said at the introduction, is the 36 green triangular, and that's for starting and joining. I've whipped up a body so you can kind of see the shape that we're aiming for if you're going to be felting along with the video. And as well, don't worry too much. Now, I started, when I started doing these angels, I actually did a small template so I could measure it against the template. But then I quickly found it really didn't matter. If your angel's a bit um, more squat, does it matter? No. If it's if thinner and taller, does it matter? No. So just begin to work into your yarn with your coarse needle, okay? I'll leave that kind of up in the corner so we can see kind of what we're aiming for. As always, if you're working with your coarse needle and you feel that the, uh, that the core is feeling just that little bit crunchy, you just move on to your next needle, which will be a higher number. The higher the number, the finer the needle. So just keep working. See, I'm, all I'm bothered about at the moment is just getting it into kind of a ball, in a rough ball, because I'm worrying about the shape more when I go on to my next needle. This is really just to get some of these fibres tangled together so it's not just a, a puff ball that I'm trying to work with and it's all going horribly wrong. Okay. Okay, so now when it's in a relative ball, you can start to think about the shape. So just pop it onto your mat and then start to think, let's turn that over. So it's going to start to be worked a bit more flat on the top and the bottom and start to work into the sides. You still need to work the top and the bottom, however. But we're going to try and get this into a triangle. So just keep moulding it with your hands. That's the best tip that I can give you at this point. I will leave the top area, unlike this that I've done just to show you the shape, I'm going to leave the top area on this a bit more fluffy because it helps to join when we've got that head done. Okay, so give it a turn into the side, turn a that way around, onto her back, I guess. That's it, just keep working. Okay, now at this point, I'm going to go on to my next needle. 
because I can feel that there's a bit of resistance there because we've worked it quite a little bit now. So we're going to say goodbye to the 36 green triangular and hello to the 38 red triangular. So this is the firming. So it kind of makes sense, doesn't it, as you're going through. Um, just a hair there, it's probably a chihuahua hair. Yeah, it kind of makes sense that you started with that. This one's firming. You can see it's starting to take shape now. And turn onto a side. And just kind of working evenly round. Now I will put in the bottom the timestamps for the video. So for those who can already felt and are quite confident with what they're doing, they don't have to sit and listen to me rambling on. You can just skip to the pertinent parts. Pertinent, that's a good word for a Monday morning, isn't it? Okay. So keep working, keep shaping. I am going to go all the way through on this video rather than skip because as I said, you can just go by the timestamps if you don't want to sit and watch this part. But when you're starting out, I think it's helpful to see the whole process from start to finish. See, I'm leaving that fluffy still. I'm not working that at all. Just working around. Now let's have a look at the bottom. So the bottom is going to be quite flat because obviously we want her to stand up. I mean, you might not want her to stand up. You might not worry too much, but the, the base is going to be flattened anyway. Um, now with mine, because they kind of um, progressed and um, evolved and I've decided I want them on a Christmas tree, I'm not too worried about how they stand. So as long as they look, you know, in the correct shape and they have a base, I'm quite happy with that. If you're really confident, you could always put a, you know, cut a small piece of cardboard there so that she has a stable base and then you could add a little bit more filling around and just lock that in there. Or you could put a couple of baking beads in there to weight her down if you want a stand in. There's always a means to do things. Just use your imagination, get creative. Okay, and you can see she's really beginning to take shape now. These are so simple and they make such beautiful, beautiful gifts as well. Let's see, keep going in. And you're just kind of working around equally really. So after you've done a bit of work on the bottom, work around the side. Just look for bits that you'll see. Some bits look a bit more puffy than others, a bit more cloud-like. So they need just a little bit more work in. And you can go rounder with your angel if you want her kind of to sit rounder. Or you can go flatter like this one. It's your project. And as I said, I don't charge for any templates that I'll be using on here. They'll just be on the website. You can download them. And you can use them and have my full permission to sell them also. I think all I would ask is if you do sell them, just uh, just credit uh, me as the designer. Just put my website on there or something, and that's fine. That's lovely. I think that's a fair swap. Okay, keep working, and we're getting there. Some areas feel are beginning to feel the little crunch now. Some areas not so much. So we just keep working on those areas. Because what you don't you don't want to over felt so you can't add your colour because it's just going to be really crunchy and difficult. But you don't want to under felt because then when you add your colour, you're going to end up pulling all of this um, core through. 
which is a nice look, but it's a nice look when you're doing it intentionally and you're using, say, a reverse needle because a reverse needle is great for fluff. If you did want to do a fluffy angel, um, the reverse needle, these ones have um, the little barbs on. I don't know if you can see. Let me try and get close to the camera. Yeah, you can see the little barbs there, little notches cut out. So as you push in, it felts, okay, because that's the way that the, the barbs are. A reverse needle, the barbs are on the other way. So as you pull out, that's when it felts, but it brings it brings that core out. So you can actually create, you put your colour on and it pulls a bit of core out. So it fluffs up your work. So that's nice if you're doing little woodland animals or anything. But for most of my projects, so far anyway... I will be using the basic needles. Let's not be spending a bomb on uh, things just because they sound cool. Let's just use what we need to use. Okay, make sure that bottoms. As well, when you're adding colour, depending on what you're using your angel for, you don't even have to necessarily add the colour on the bottom if you're going to have a stud somewhere. But obviously if you're going to have a hung from the car windscreen or you're going to make a little Christmas decoration, then uh, you're going to want to cover that base with, um, with the colour. We are nearly there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to the head because then... This isn't quite fully there, but then we can make sure that um, the head and the body are matching in terms of size. OK, so we are now on the red triangular for firming and shaping. So that one is going and we're going to bring back in the 36 green triangular for starting and joining. And as before, push those fibres in. You don't have to like stab stuff. Just uh, just gently will do. Take your time, enjoy the process. Sometimes helps you, when you're new as well and learning, it sometimes helps you to get to grips. If you do it really gently and just really think about what it's doing, it's just pushing and you can see it's just pushing those fibres into the middle. That's, that's what it's doing. That's how we felt, people. And it's so good. It's so satisfying. As someone who taught and um, enjoyed knitting, crochet, cross stitch, when I discovered felting, it was like a whole new world. And clearly I'm addicted because uh, my whole life is absorbed by it now. So keep working around so it's going to become a ball. We'll switch up to the next needle soon. So you'll see when you start to try and fell, let me see if I can show you, and it's like pushing the whole thing in, that's because we need to move on to our next needle really. Because rather than slicing straight through those fibres, it's, it's just kind of pushing almost like looking like that, like pushing the whole thing in. So I'm going to move on to my next needle. So again, that is the red triangular, number 38, for firming and shaping. And we're just going to work round and around and around and around. When the head gets a bit smaller, much like the body, I will leave one area, which is going to be the join, so that that's a very secure join. But I'm not going to join until after I've added my colour. It's just the way that this project works because it's quite a delicate piece. If you start adding colour when the head is on the body, we're just going to end up dislodging everything. So that's why we're going to do it that way. Now you can see that the head is really taking shape, but it's still really big. So I'm not leaving a fluffy area yet until it's probably half of its size. Okay. 
look for the bits that are uh, a bit puffy. I'm sure there's a better term for that. Too much information, but um, I'm perimenopausal and my memory has absolutely gone. I, I'm an avid reader. I've read just so many books in my life. Um, and I used to be great with words. That was the thing I took real pride in was my um, my ability to articulate. And overnight that has vanished. So I'll be w using words <laughs> that will seem so ridiculously simple, but I just can't think of the other word. So let's just call a spade a spade. Let's bring out the Yorkshire woman in me. Although I'm not based in Yorkshire anymore. I wish I was. My uh, aim is to go back to Yorkshire. I am based in Lincolnshire. No hate to Lincolnshire, but my first love is Yorkshire. My heart belongs up north. And I miss hills as well. Lincolnshire is a very flat, <laughs> flat land. And I do miss seeing the odd hill. Okay, so I'm going to begin to leave now. I'm going to leave one area a bit more fluffy. It doesn't matter which area it is. So I'll just, where my finger is, that's where I'm going to leave a bit of fluff. Careful you don't go into your finger with the needle though. In the meantime which is my favourite trick. I have scars all over my hands from uh, being a bit gung-ho with my needles. Okay, we are getting there. Right, I'm going to break the video now until I'm at a point where I'm happy with the size of the head, the size of the body. And then we will move on to adding colour. So I'm happy with my proportions now. So we're about there, slight fluff left on the top of the body and a slight fluffy area left on the bottom of the head. So I'm now going to add some colour. So I'm going to start with the body. Now, for those who um, aren't familiar with adding colour, I will continue um, for a little while on the body. Um, for those of you who are, I would probably skip to the next section. So I'm using a lovely cream. This is just a cream Corridale. Now to add colour, we just, we pull. Okay, so we never cut a harsh line if we can help it. So we just pull a piece. Now I'm going to start with the base. So just place it where you want it and hold it. Take your finer needle. So this needle here is the 40 blue triangular, triangular and that is for detail and smoothing. So I'm just going to hold that onto there, you see? And then we're going to add, it's like tacking it on almost, if that's how you think of it. And I do this quite gently. So when you start um, a piece and you have your core wall, of course you're pushing that needle all the way in because you're pushing the fibres into the middle. Now clearly, we don't want to push our colour into the middle of the piece. So there's barbs all the way up to the end. So you don't have to go too far in to tack that colour into place. Make sure you go over all of the colour. Excuse little hairs there that'll be showing up on camera, but that's from my mat because I do so many different things and different colours they can get a bit trapped on the mat. Now with the pieces, because we don't cut, just lay it up the side of the body and tack that in as well. 
and it's just going to give that really lovely smooth finish in the end so just gently keep working up don't go over the top where our join is going to be I'll show you what to do with that shortly so just tack it into place I'm not worrying about too much about having it smooth and perfect yet because that's what I'll be doing when all of my color is on so bring up the next side and tack that into place as well and also the benefits of not pushing it in too far is that you're not going to lose too much size because of course adding anything onto this is going to compact it slightly more so you are going to lose a little bit of the size so just do consider that um, when you're finishing up your core and thinking, right, I'm ready to put the colour on. Do consider it will get slightly smaller. So that's the first piece. Let's go to the next piece. So if you remember, if it's difficult to separate it as well, just separate those fibres out a little bit. And then just give it a pull and it will give like that. And lay that. slight overlap there and then we tack that in place and again work up the side try and cover the piece that you haven't already covered and don't worry at this point because the fibers are so fine it will look a little bit gappy but it won't look gappy by the time we finish. So just keep working that up there. Remember not to go over the top because that's where we're going to want our join, isn't it? So place that next to there, slightest overlap so we don't get So the next piece, now I'm very thorough doing this, I'm sure there are people who grab a great big wad and um, I just saw a slight dark fibre in there um, and just you know slap it on and felt it in but I am a perfectionist and I do like to take my time which is why I put timestamps on my videos because not everybody wants to watch a hugely long video but I want to show you how I do it so you can replicate that you see I'm just going to add another bit onto the bottom there then we've covered the bottom haven't we there okay so it's a bit thick Now, of course, I'm not too worried about the bottom if it's slightly gappy. Because you're not really going to see the bottom when it's on my Christmas tree. So just move that round a little bit. And tack that in. So let's work up the sides and that's going to bring it just round onto the back or the front, whatever it may be. So just keep going and let's bring it up this side. I can still see that little piece of black in there and it it's driving me crazy where is it you will get when you buy walls just these slight imperfections that haven't come out when the wall's been carded so sometimes you just have to deal with those as you come across them that's it pull that up
I will always say as well when adding colour, follow your lines, follow the natural lines of your piece. You'll end up with a much um, cleaner finish and it will just look more professional. So the bot bottom is covered. I will add a bit there on that corner. It just looks a bit faint there. Don't worry about the top still. Let's start on the front. I will sometimes card things out. So this piece here is a bit tangly. So sometimes I will get my carder. And a carder is essentially like a dog brush. You know, the metal um, dog brushes you get. Again, if you decide to card your own wool, don't buy carders. They're exactly the same thing. They cost about 70 quid and dog brushes cost about a fiver. Maybe more than that. I think I spent a fiver on mine, but it was an eBay um, purchase that I had to wait forever for from China. But I'm not spending a bomb. Okay, so just line that up there and in. And as I said, follow the line. So if you've got a bit draping over there, follow it around. It's going to look more neat. Try and hold on to the end of the fibres as well so it doesn't get kind of raggy while you're felting it in. So you just keep going around until it's covered. Same with the head, but we're going to use a flesh colour. But with the head, I'll just go round and round until I'm happy with the coverage of it. So if I finish um, the colour on here, and then we'll come back for the next section. OK, I just wanted to show you something, actually. So when you're adding the colour, so as you can see, I've kind of gone from bottom to top. And I did mention I'd tell you what to do with this bit. So I just keep holding it at the top and working my way up. And that way you can deal with any gaps as well. I'm just getting all of that nice and smooth. So I will work on that a little bit more. So this top part here, now I said about you don't cut your wool. Well, at this point in time, I do cut my wool. So let me get my scissors. So make sure it's a bit longer than your piece as well, because we're going to need to belt these in. So I'm just going to do that in kind of a roundish way. An arc, I guess. OK, because this piece now, when I said about carding, what I'll do is you do it with your hands even, is you can recard that for a piece. Just like that. Then you can use that again, you see, and then that's fine. So... Then you can begin to work that into the top. But I don't want to overwork it because we need to add the head and uh, I need a little bit of fluff available. So it kind of looks like a little onion at this point in time. So I'm just going to do a little bit of work on that and then I'll show you it when it's complete. And then I'll move on to the head after that. Okay, so now we have our body and that is now covered and all in cream. And then I've added the flesh colour to the head. And as I said, I pulled it around from the front round and smooth. You don't have to worry too much about the back because it's going to be covered by hair. So my back is quite kind of rough. I know that's all going to be covered by hair, so I'm not too concerned. I left the top open as well because it will have hair and at the bottom that's going to be our join. So as you can see now, her head tilts forward on the finished piece. So there, that's how she's kind of going to look from the side. So before I add her head and add the hair, the next step we're going to take is we will make the wings so this is where your template from my website comes in so print your template and you need to cut the gray part cut that out and then we'll come back also choose the color of the angel you're going to make as i said earlier i'm going to be doing the green so that's what the card looks like 
So I'll just cut this out and then we'll get back to it. So here we go, we're ready to start the wings now. The wings are made as flat pieces, of course. So if you take your printable template and just get a small piece of your chosen colour. Now this is where you're going to have to hold this quite steady, this piece here. Okay, so lay that over so it covers the gap of your template. Take your finer needle, hold on tight to your template and just start to shape that into the gap there. Now if you take a, just a small piece of wool, you can see through it so you can kind of see the edges of your template which makes it a bit easier. Don't push the needle in too far. We're not felting this into the mat. We're just getting the shape on this template, okay? Just keep working around. Nice fine needle, as I said. Just move it back if you need to see where the edges are. And we're going to get the basic shape. We don't have to be too exacting here. Okay. I'm just looking at the back to find out where I'm going. Around there. And then push it in. It can be quite fiddly, but it's worth it in the end. Okay, so the next little bit goes up there. And let's have a look at the top. That's there. So if you can kind of get your edges, you're, uh, you're laughing quite quickly aren't you okay so I'm just going to felt that down a little bit again I'm not pushing right deep into that mat and we're going to need to turn it in a minute so I don't want to be having to wrench it off the mat and destroying the shape just look in there I really want to get my it looking like the shape of the wing before I turn it now the end result will not look as chiselled as this template. Now the reason for that is that we are just using card. If we were using a plastic template like a cookie cutter, and if you've got one in an angel wing, then go you. Then obviously you could get a much better um, edge and a finish. But as always, I try and keep these things simple so you don't have to buy special products in. If you've got a felting needle, a couple of colours, we can we can get you going. Simple as that, really. Just keep working around there. And you can see it's kind of in the shape of a wing. It's not going to have the uh, exact perfection of the shape. Now, once I'm happy, that is within the confines of the um, of the template, which I'm not happy yet. I will be ready to turn. And work the other side so if just work around with your needle pull those little stray bits in there look and work around you can see it begin to begin to take shape and that is beginning to resemble a wing going to the side as well because going into the side is what's going to give you your shape. It's going to give you your definition. And it depends how exacting you want to be. If you're happy with that shape, like a general um, shape, that's absolutely fine. Turn it and carry on. If you want to get more definition, at the end, you can work into the side a lot more and just define these feathers Keep working around that edge. I want, I want all these little straggly bits in so it's easier to get back in the template when I've turned it. Okay. Okay, so lift up my template. Okay, I'm going to turn it because I'm now going to be working on the back side of it. Just pull it up from your mat. It will have gone in a little bit, but nothing too drastic. Okay, and then just reverse the process work in find your edges if I can find my edge there we go and really you can spend as much time or as little time on this as you like I'm not sure if you can hear the aeroplane in the background um, 
apologies if you can. I hope it's not too loud on the video. Start working around the edge, you see. And then you don't have to hold on for dear life onto your template once you've uh, got, you know, a relatively happy angel wing looking shape. Really, my main concern now is just felting this down to a nice um, thickness. And I'm going to want both about the same thickness. Now, if you're concerned about quantities, um, I weighed out to do the wings 0.48 grams. And I pulled about half off to do this first wing. So around 0.24 grams per wing. Let's get in there. So I'm right handed so it makes it hard to shape it if it's on my left side. So I may have to do my shaping when I've turned it again. And then I can show you better what that process looks like. So I'm just going into the side there again. Look, look how the shape's becoming really defined. But I'm going to do most of my work when it's on the other side because it's a lot easier for my right handedness. But you left handers will be laughing at this point. You see how that's defining now. So let's take that off. Look at that. Okay. So we're going to turn again. So flip. This is why I put a few on the sheet as well, on the downloadable sheet. So um, because you will be catching it with your needle and whatnot. All right, let me just get that into there. And the template becomes more of a rough guide at this point. So what I want to do is I really want to start giving the definition now because it's quite a nice little width. Quite happy with that. So right. So if we want to get definition, literally find where you want that wing to go in. Push your needle in really carefully with your fingers, of course. And in, look at that. The little stray pieces, just as I'm working around, I'll get those little stray pieces in there. At the top, we want that to curve around nice and neatly. Now the next feather is around about there. So in I go again, push, push. I'm actually gonna remove my template now and just work on it because we know it's around about the right size this is where I'm going to catch myself if I'm not careful push 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 you see push push go back to making it of a flat piece around the edges and I'll get to there and I'm going to push 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 working at an angle there slightly push push and as I said if you don't want to be faffing around getting you know, the feathered shape, just do it as, as that kind of a shape and it'll be absolutely fine. My first ones were very much like that. I've actually changed the template for the purposes of this tutorial. Um, so you can go really simply or you can go all in. Okay. So there we have it. So we have one wing, which when it goes on, it's hard to see against my uh, my background here. I'm not sure if I could put something under there. Let's have a look. Let's just pop my little journal there. 
probably see that better. Yeah. So that's looking good. So I'm going to go make the second wing and then we will be back. So now we have two wings. I'm really happy with how the screens turned out as well. Um, I just love it. The slight variations of colour. Gorgeous. OK. So what you're going to want to do now, we're ready to attach, is just place your angel on and then you know kind of roughly the height you're going to want to pop them on at. I'll just put the template aside. So that one just plain card template has done one angel. And as you can see, it's still got some life left in it for other angels as well. So I'm going to turn her over. I'm going to pop these onto the back with a little bit of a gap. Just let me keep turning her around. There's a bit of fluff there. I'm just going to sort that out while I'm here. Okay. So I want them kind of quite out like this. So if I turn it over, you can see the kind of there, around about there, I think will be good. So switch your needles up. So take away your fine needle now and let's welcome back in the 36 green triangular. And then if you pop them where you want them, I'm just going to lay my thumb across the bottom, round about there, and then we're just going to join. So push in around the edge, not too far in. We don't want to felt it down. Move that one out of the way, that's fine. And I'm just going to go around the edge. Check we're happy with the placement. Just pull it out a little bit more, I think. Yeah. So, and then work your way around the edge. Always think about joining. Think about adding your colour. You're tacking something on. So I'll just work along the wing, around the edge. But obviously we want this to be a free edge here. So only tack up to where you want it to sit. Okay, so now I'm going to take my second wing, round about the same place, and tack around the outside. Make sure your bottom edge of the wing sits equally to the other wing around the edge, check placement. It's easy to change if you change it up, even with the one that we've attached. If you're not happy with it, you can just pull it off and start again. So I'm happy with my placement. So I'm gonna go back around that edge. And just make sure that's going into the body a little bit there to make sure that is secure. Okay, so we now have a body and the wings. I'm gonna have my green needle out. This is my fine needle, just as I, it's just showing me that they're still quite, because I like them to look quite fluffy, so I don't wanna felt it too much in, but if it starts to kind of occlude what I'm looking at. I'll just give it a little felt down. Okay. Okay. I think next we should do her heart and her hands. So get a bit of matching colour as to what you've chosen to use for your angel. Now I don't weigh out the um, heart wool because it's essentially it's negligible. The best way to do a heart is to start by doing a flat circle. So take a small piece of your chosen colour. Now give it a little roll in your hand. There we go. And because it's such a small piece, 
I'm going to take my medium needle. So that's the firming and shaping needle, which is the red triangular. And just push in. It's a flat piece, but it's a round piece. So rather than turning it over and over as we did with the body, working from the sides and the top and the bottom. You can also, if you're thinking, hmm, that's looking a bit big, just bring a piece over like that and then felt that down. Bring a piece over, felt that down. And then you're concentrating on making a flat piece rather than it turning into something spherical. So keep going. And it doesn't matter what size you have it. You could have a bigger heart on there, you could have a smaller, it really doesn't matter. But initially concentrate on getting a flat piece. So as you can see, this is flat. Go around the edge. This is where you're likely to catch yourself, so be super careful. Work on the top, around the sides, on the top, around the sides. Everything is balance. Just balance out your movement. So we've been around the side, so let's flip it and go on the back. Look around the edges. There is method in my madness, which you will see very shortly. So we're not going to over felt this. Get it to around about the size as a whole, speaking as a kind of as the whole heart, the size that you want your heart to be. Working around and at the top and at the bottom, and it takes a minute or two. I have autistic children. I can't throw out comments like that without... Um, Getting it in the neck back. It was two minutes. Okay. Okay, so I'm relatively happy with that size. Yep. Just do a little bit more flattening out and rounding that off. Lovely. Okay. So I've got my circle, kind of. So we just think about what a heart looks like. So let's start on the top. So we're going to do as we did when we were doing the wings. Push, push, push into the middle from the top, watching your finger all the while. And then just work around those edges to curve those. Push, push. So I'm going to start on the side and then once I've got a basic heart shape, when I can see where I'm going with it, I'm going to move to my finer needle. I just want to get to the point where I can see where I am clearly. I'll go back in the top, push, 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 push. So we're getting there. So I'm going to switch out my needle. Head back to my fine needle. It's quite difficult to see on camera. Um, let's see if I can show it to camera a little bit better. So there we go. So you can see it's probably looking more like a heart to me than it is to you from the slight distance of the, uh, the camera setup. So just keep going in the top, working around the edge until you're happy or if not happy, at ease with it. You've come to a level of acceptance. That's what I tend to get to sometimes. Okay. And the reason I'm not being too exacting is you can perfect it when it's on your piece. And I'm gonna show you that too. So relatively happy with that. I tend to pick up small pieces with my needle so I can place it. Let's bring our angel back into play. Now, her hands are going to be just so, just below her face, around about here. So I'm going to pop this a bit more central. And I am going to use my fine needle to attach this. So watching your fingers at the back, 
just go through the heart just in the middle at this point ouch just poked my finger through the back that's why we need to be careful okay so you can kind of see that's looking like a heart now yeah i hope so so now using my fine needle i'm just going to do a bit more perfecting and shaping there's like little scrags of wool that need to be dealt with just bring them round, poke them under then you can just start to, as you find yourself happy with the shape, just start to push that in and give that some permanence. Another good word for a Monday. I think we should start the Monday Club and see what uh, good words we can come out with on a Monday. Okay, and just keep working round the edge, going to a point there. Just push that over a little bit. I'm going to start to give it a bit more of a jab when you find it, its little sweet spot, its little happy place. There we go. Lovely. Happy with that. Now, if you've got a little bit of fluff and you don't want to keep poking at it with your needle, just give it a little clip. Give it a little haircut and get rid of some of that fluff. Okay. We are ready to attach a head. So we're attaching something quite big on something quite big, relatively speaking. So I'm going to move away from my finer needle. Let's put that to the side. I'm going to start with my coarsest needle. So if you remember, that's a 36 green triangular. If at any point I feel like it's a bit crunchy and I need a slightly finer needle, I'm going to move on to the 38 reg regular, red triangular. Oh, Lord. OK. Let's begin. Remember that the head is going to be, let's show it on camera, tilted forward, which is why I didn't really cover that. So that's going to be tilted forward just so. So hold it in position. It's not easy and it's definitely not going to be easy to do it and show you on camera. I'm just going to push some of these fibres in there. But these are going to help it to bond. So you don't want to get completely rid of your fibres. OK, just get that little bit of blue out there. OK. Now, this can take some time. It can be only because it's a bit fiddly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put her head on so I'm happy with placement. So let's show you. Kind of here. And then I'm going to go through the back of her head. Remember that we're putting hair on. So don't worry if this head starts to look a little bit misshapen because we can deal with it. It's not a problem. So down into there. And that's why we left method in madness. That is why we left some fluff at the top of the body and the bottom of the head. And we can blend that in once we're happy. OK, so let's just concentrate on getting this head on and it tilted doesn't matter that it looks a little bit skewed at the moment. It doesn't matter if her head's too far forward. It doesn't matter if her head's too far back at this point. Right, I'm just going to hold it. You can actually see it OK like that. And I'm just going to keep going. The more secure her head is on, the easier everything else is going to be. OK. So you can be quite brutal. You can brutalise the back of her head because no one's going to see it. Okay, you see there? So she's leaning forward. This doesn't matter. It's going to get blended in and that's actually going to help to secure to the back of the head also. We are in a very good place. So let's just do a bit more of the rough stuff on the back of her head right down into her body. OK, so 
looking quite good. Now, take my finer needle and I'm just going to go around where her chin would be and make sure that these fibres underneath her chin are just tucked in there. If some wool moves, some wool's moved it just a little bit there. You can add a bit more colour afterwards, it doesn't matter, it's not a problem. Okay, so now I'm going to take my fine needle and I'm just going to work quite quickly, keeping her head tilted forward because we want her to stay positional. And then in we go. This is all going to be covered by the hair, so please do not worry. This is given as a lovely, beautiful, secure join. And always remember, you watch these videos and, and I'm recording and I'm showing and I'm talking. So it probably takes like, it probably seems like it takes quite a long time to do one of these. But once you've done a couple, honestly, you can whip one up in about half an hour or so. I'm just taking my time because I'm teaching. So don't be alarmed and think, crikey, you're saying this could be a present. Well, it's going to take me a week to do it. I promise it won't. Right, so keep lifting her up. Have a look. Also shape as you're going along. Defluff a little bit. Okay. So we're getting there. You can see that we're getting there. So the next step is we are going to add her hair. Now I haven't weighed out any hair either because you can do whatever you like. She could have short hair, long hair. You could use any kind of wool you like. You could use normal wool um, and plait them and put them on. You can do absolutely anything. So really make her your own. I'd love to see people's work. So if you do make an angel, please do consider contacting me through the website and showing me. I'd love to see them. Okay, let's have a look. Now, as you can see, this is quite a rough wall. It has still got, it's got little pieces in there that haven't been carded out, but it's fine. I pick them out as we go along. I love this. It's just so kind of rustic and oh, love it. Okay, so I just take a chunk of wool, whatever colour I'm using. Have a look at her and I've kind of imagine where, let's get rid of some of that, it's too much. Just kind of imagine where her hairline would be if she was stood like this. So around about, I give a bit of fluff as well because then I can pull it down if I want to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it around her head. Okay, you see? And then I just start to drape it down the back and bring that down. Just pat that down on the back of her head and bring it to a bit of a join at the back. It's very forgiving, this stuff. Okay. I'm going to take my fine needle, I think. And once I'm happy-ish, hold it on and let's tack. So go around the edge, just so we've got that front hair piece in place and then we can play with her hair and do pretty things with it. Now, I've considered as well with these angels, once their hair's done, you can make a little flower and pop it in the back. You can do all kinds of things. They're very versatile. Okay, so that's her hair on the front. Let's turn her around. You can see we're looking a bit of a scruff at the moment. We've also got a bald patch. We don't want that. So, flatten the hair down and tack. Only on the top and where we need to join that wall. And then I'm gonna to start to think about her hairstyle. I like to um, give it a little twist at the back. That's what I like to do. So just let me keep, I'm gonna put a little bit more just on top of her head. I don't think she wants a bald patch. Just pop a little bit more on there, tack that in. 
There we go. The world's your oyster with these, with what you could do with hair and you put little accessories on. You could do what you want. They're just... I love them. But then I'm biased, aren't I? I design them, so that's... Um, that's me being massively biased there. Right, let's have a look. What we got? Right, I'm going to tack a bit more onto the back of her head. I want it so her hair kind of falls naturally where it wants to fall. So if the back of her head is covered. Okay. Uh, I usually take my needle. She has got some bits and pieces in this wall, so I do need to... Rake some of that. It's like doing my daughter's hair. Rake some of that out. I'm not saying my daughter's got loads of bits in her hair, by the way. Just, uh, you know what it's like as a mum. And they come to you with their hair and it's all matted. And it's like, oh, God. No. Okay. So, I like to twist. Just give a little twist to the side. Can you see? Just twist. And you'll see if little bits are sticking up, you don't want it looking quite as messy as that. So then have a look and another twist and check. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to pin. So just think about it. You're just pinning her hair. You're giving her a hairdo. It's nice. There we go. And I keep twisting around the back. So she's got the twisted hair there. And then I'm going to do the same. Let's just get your fringe done, Chuck. I'm going to do the same on this side. Twist. Twist. I'm just looking at her to make sure it looks okay. Pin. Then I'll work down the back of her head a little bit more. You see how it's kind of falling into a quite a natural um, way that hair would sit. I'll just push that down there. Little twist. Lovely. And then if I tack that into the back of her neck. Bring the other one round to meet. And then through both. Okay, so then she's got some hair just coming down like that, you see? I'm going to give her a trim. I don't want her hair to be longer than her body. So let's have a look. Just a little bit more on the crown, I think. Her head there looks a bit thin. Such a good colour, this wool. It really gives that hair effect. I absolutely love it. I can't tell you what it is, unfortunately, because it was um, donated for my works. Okay. Right. I'm going to add a little bit to her, to the front hairline. Just make that line a bit neater, you see there. And remember, she's looking down, so the hairline is coming down at least halfway down her face. Now let's twist that in. Pop that into there where the little twist is. Okay, let's make sure the top of her head looks good. Just keep going until you're happy. I'm pretty happy with her. I think she looks very cute. Um, be conscious once you've got your hair on as well. 
let's have a look once you've got your hair on you can then see that you know that bit there could do with a little bit of neatening up on the neck we can do all of that not a problem just keep returning to bits if you need to just to give them that just to perfect them just put that in there okay so what do we need next i think it's time for a halo so halo time how exact do you want to be if you want to be really exact pull a length off measure it around a head or get a tape measure measure around a head and make it to size however this is me we're talking about and i like to win it so get a piece of yellow wool hold it taut between your fingers now i do have a multi-tool i can use for this just to make it quicker for video purposes however i'm not saying you need this to um to make your halo it's literally just so it's quicker while we're filming so just work up and down this piece lift turn a quarter or a half we don't have to be exact it's just about we're gonna get this as a flat piece to pop on as a halo lift turn bit more you will pick up annoying bits from your felting mat I'm not going to worry too much lift hold lift turn And just keep going until it holds its shape quite well. So I'll do a couple more, more of these and then come back and show you how to join. There we go. So I have that piece. I literally went over it three or four more times. Um, once it's holding its own shape, all you need to do is take your angel, decide on how big you want the halo around about that I'd say and then I'm going to cut okay take your middle needle roughly join And then you'll see you'll be able to pick it up and then join from the side. Watching your fingers at all times. It's, uh, if you pop it down on like this so you can see it's circular, lift it so that base bit is on the bottom on the mat and then you can just angle your needle in there and join it and it's going to be a pretty seamless join i apologize you can't see past my fingers very well Oops. okay so you can see that's looking pretty neat you can barely see that join i'm just going to take off those little bits of Let's take my finest needle now and i just want to roll it and as i roll I'm going to felt in there, taking my needle at an angle. So it's just so the felt's really good, the join's really good. Just roll it around till you're happy. 
Okay. Now again, remembering that she's bent forward, so her halo is not going to be up here. Pop the halo onto more of the front of her head. Using your fine needle, just join through the bottom of that halo. Following the true shape of the halo so you don't distort its shape, yeah? And as always, just keep, you know, looking at it from a distance. Does it need a bit of a jiggery-pokery? A bit of manipulation around there. Do I need to do a bit here? Just... I find with my projects, when I've finished a project or a design, I have to walk away and sleep. The next day... I can look and say, oh yeah, I like that, but I'm never, ever happy when I first finish a project. Ever, 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 ever. So our angel now needs some hands. So again, I'm not going to weigh. What I'll do is I'll just get two equal amounts of flesh-coloured Corridale, which is what I'm using. And it's around about... Ball it up, so we're essentially doing exactly what we did with the love heart. Okay, so ball it up. That one feels like it's got a little bit too much. Then I'll take, let's start with the, uh, the middle needle, I think. And we're going to work as we did with the love heart. So if you do need to go back and revisit that. You can do so. So I'm going to felt these down so they're kind of round um, flat pieces like we did with the love heart initially and then I'll show you how to shape them. There we are. So we have two roundish pieces there. They don't have to be too exact, do they? So there we go. A little bit of thickness there. Nothing too crazy. Two of those and we are going to join those together just with a couple of that's enough that is enough okay then we add under her chin and above the heart so it's like when the prayer position wants to be that they're quite close to her face okay so lay her down and then we need to push into the bottom of the hands, into the body. I'm using my medium needle here. But I think I'm going to switch to my fine. And then just work into the bottom a few times. until you feel quite happy that there's uh, that they're relatively secure again these aren't toys remember as well so they don't have to be capable of um, gale force nine winds or children because they are more ornamental so you know as long as they're on don't worry and also with some of my pieces as well if it's really fine work like this and you're concerned then I use a hot glue gun and I'll just take a bit of hot glue and uh, pop a bit of hot glue on there. Okay, so there's her hands. We can do a bit more work once they're on, just like with everything, just to make sure we're happy with where they're sitting, how they look, positions, etc, etc. There we go. There we go. On to the final piece then. Let's do the loop. Okay, so let's add the loop. Take a length of thread. You don't need to measure it. Just loop it in half. Thread the loose end through your darning needle. Then you're going to make a hole through the top of the head. Down. To the bottom of the neck. Da -da -da. And then we should be able to follow that path with our darning needle. Da, da, da. Okay, I'm going to use pliers 
because it is so hot today that my hands are far too sweaty to do that without pliers. Okay. I'm going to hold onto my loop at the top because I don't want that to pull back through. Now, pull down this thread until you're at the, about the length you want for your loop at the top. So I reckon about that, like a Christmas tree size loop will do. Let's remove that needle. Okay, so I'm going to do a couple of knots underneath her hair. It's always a good idea to keep hold of your loop as well while you do this. Because you don't, exactly what I did. You don't want to ruin the size of your loop. So a couple of knots. Trim the excess, but don't trim it all the way down to the knot because you don't want it to work its way out. It's under her hair. No one's going to see it. Don't worry. Pop her hair down. There we go. And there we have a little praying angel for good luck. She's just so beautiful. I just, I love them. Absolutely love these. Okay, so thanks for watching and I'll see you on my next video.